Welcome to Community Report. I'm Vicki Pritchard. Mary Gardner and Joe Craven are with Girls on the Run of Greater Cincinnati, which is an outstanding organization that I've just found out about it and can't wait to hear all of the details of all the wonderful work you're doing. Welcome to the show, ladies. Well, great. Thank We're you. thrilled to be here. Thank you for having us. Well, Joe, I'll start with you. Tell, tell our viewers exactly what is Girls on the Run. Sure. Girls on the Run is a, a curriculum for girls in third through eighth grade and it's a 12-week program and we offer a fall and a spring season and it's an experience-based curriculum that's um, also centered around a kind of a creative way to integrate running mm -hmm. and so it culminates with a 5k event both in the fall and the spring. So exercise in the most broadest use of the term actually. You're yes, exercising and it's a, it's physically and exercising your mentally mind. Mentally as well. Yeah, that's great. How many girls do you generally work with that are well, involved in the program? Each team, for a first year team, would have 12 girls and then experienced teams can have up to 15. And this season we have 1,100 girls with 90 teams across uh, Dearborn County, Northern Kentucky, Greater Cincinnati area. Wow, that is really a broad reach. Yes, a good, exciting program, and it's growing, growing every season. Well, tell us what is the exact significance of some of the specifics of the program. I know you you talk about specific topics, subjects that you merge with the girls. Tell us about some of those. Sure. There's an elementary program for third through fifth graders, which is Girls on the Run, and then there's Girls on Track for middle school girls. So there are two different curriculum programs. Obviously, the the program for the middle school girls deals with a little more sophisticated, age-appropriate issues. Um, and then the third through fifth grade, it's just about healthy life choices, being confident, positive body image, um, not caving into peer pressure, and just really making those really good life choices while um, embedding running and a healthy right. lifestyle. Right, and do you see, uh, the age group, does it seem to be getting younger, the girls that seem to need this kind of, I don't want to say intervention, but this kind of just engagement and, and dialogue that and activity that you provide for them? Well, what have you seen over your time with this organization? You know, I think the biggest thing is that we really see it as being a program for every girl. Um, every girl who's in grades three to eight is dealing with these issues with her friends and with her family and trying to learn how to grow up in this world that we're in. And so we have a very diverse population. We have about 50% of our girls who require some level of scholarship to participate. We're in private schools, we're in Cincinnati public schools, we're all over the place. And so we really, yeah, we, we think that, you know, the issues that these girls are dealing with are getting younger and younger, unfortunately. So we do see ourselves as a preventative program that every girl can benefit from. And that's a great point because it is issues that every girl faces. It's not right. a particular demographic group mm -hmm. or a particular that's neighborhood a great point, exactly. or school. It, it really is that every girl program. Yeah, it, it really is just young women overall. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What, what kind of feedback do you get from the mothers of these young girls? Um, well, I'm a mother of one of the girls. My daughter, who's a freshman in high school now, participated in fifth grade. And it was really just a life-changing experience for us. Um, you know, as a mother-daughter team, um, I was a coach on the team that she per participated in and a, and a running buddy for um, one of her teammates. And it truly is just a, um, you know, I like to call it kind of a girl power program. I think when they're in that young age and they're just starting to explore and, and get to know themselves and their peers, um, it's really empowering for them. Um, and it, it's exciting as a parent uh, to see your daughter go through that and, and really um, you know, just have that increased awareness about herself. Right. And have um, you had some favorite stories from young women who've been involved? Well, the, the number one thing we hear all the time is, I wish this program existed when I was that age. Is that right? Across the board. I mean, it's unfortunate that we as women connect with it so well yes. because we all know what those issues, we can put ourselves back there in middle school and remember exactly what it was like. Right. And we can just really see how important this program is to help give girls the tools to get through that. You are absolutely right. I don't know that there's one woman, one woman you could ever talk to who couldn't say, oh, junior high, you know, oh, surviving <laughs> junior high. And there were probably many of those still the same issues that they confront, that they deal with, uh, probably exacerbated by social media, I'm sure too. Absolutely. Uh, and, and is that something you hear that you've seen? Yes, absolutely. I think it's, just these girls um, today have so many different ways to hurt each other and giving the girls the tools to stand up for themselves, to stand up for their friends and to really recognize what's right and wrong because I think that 
you know, kids in general are just very easily swayed and they're not really thinking about the choices that they're making and how, um, how much of a lasting impact they can make. So this program really gives girls the tools to stand up for themselves. And you really do teach them in terms of choices about goal setting, defining goals and, and following through, moving forward. So you kind of take them from that. Let's just not think about how mean we can be. Let's one, think of how we can be cooperative with one another but set goals. Uh, what do you hear from these young women from this range of ages? Are they thinking about it when they come to you, when, when you find them? Some of them are, mm -hmm. um, and, and they are, you know, volunteer participants, you know, so some of them do have those goals in mind, and, and some of them don't, and some of them don't realize that they can set goals in every aspect of their life. And I think running that 5K really brings that point home for them because they can set that goal and it's not something they accomplish overnight. They, they train for it over a 12-week period. And so that really sets them up for setting those goals in every aspect of what they do. And to know that it's not, you know, in this kind of immediate reward, immediate feedback kind of that's society. Absolutely you know, true. It teaches them to work just toward that. That you do that. that. That's so smart. Talk about how people can register for this. You said you were with, uh, part of the team with your daughter. You worked with your daughter when she, sure. when she did. How did this, does that come about? If someone says, okay, I'd like for my daughter and I to be involved, what's the first step? Well, um, it, the first step is to find a team um, or create a team if there's not one in, in the school where so your child possible. attends. So absolutely. So for example, when my daughter got involved, um, there was not a team at her school. And so I contacted um, Erin, who is our current executive director, um, and she walked me through that process of applying for our school to be a site. Um, and there is sort of a formal process for that. And so if someone is thinking about uh, starting a team either through a school or a community center or a YMCA, a church, uh, you need to sort of start thinking about that right now because the deadline is June 1 for mm -hmm. fall teams. Uh, and there's a process that really needs to happen before June 1. So, you know, you only have about a month to get that application in and contact us. So um, now's the time to kind of start okay. thinking about that if somebody wants so to do that. So you're the point person for, for that, and then you just walk people through it. You're, but that's, you're the starting point. Yes, yes. Um, we can help them from, and if they don't want to start a, a team, then we have 90 teams that, you know, possibly they could join. So after June 1st, we will have oh, those um, schools available. What about people who just want to volunteer their time? They hear about this and they say, it's such a great organization. I, I'd like to be involved in some way. Do you accept volunteers? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Ah. That's, that's our whole organization. <laughs> those are the people who drive our program. So we're oh, a very wonderful. small office of five. Wow. And it's all volunteers who really work with the girls on a weekly basis and run the program. Um, we, could n we couldn't be in 90 schools without them. So we have volunteers who work with the girls on a weekly basis. Um, if that's not something that fits into a schedule, we have volunteers who help with all of the behind the scenes as far as actually putting the actual pieces together for the teams. Um, we have another couple hundred volunteers who help just on race day. Wow. And then we have a number of small volunteer opportunities held at our office to sort of um, keep the program running. So. No we, shortage of need, no, is there? No, no, no. We have Absolutely. committees. Um, we are just so, so fortunate by the volunteers that we have to help us run this program. And is this something men and women can volunteer for? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's great to have dads and, and, and male role models involved as well. Oh, so, I'm sure so. I mean, there's a whole other aspect where each girl that um, participates in the 5K has a running buddy. Um, so if you can't okay. commit every week, then we'd like to have those girls have somebody, everyone has someone out on the course with them. Oh, that's great. And so, um, you know, that's another way that, that you can fit in. And I guess the other thing is, um, because it is a curriculum, uh, sometimes people think, oh, I have to be a teacher to be able to implement right. this. And you really don't. There's a great training that, that Mary heads up. And so before you get into your season, they train all the coaches. You get um, a box, a coach's box, which is like Christmas, that first season that I coached. <laughs> Everything that you need is right in there. Okay. And so uh, you don't have to be afraid about not knowing how to teach because they give you ev absolutely everything you need. What does that training entail, Mary? What, what goes into that? Well, we like to give a little bit of background about the program because people have sort of varying levels of understanding when they first get involved. A lot of people that come to us are teachers who may be one of their other um, co-teachers has invited them to coach with them or a parent who knows that they want their daughter involved but don't really understand that it's so much more than a running program. So we love to give the history, the fact that we are an international organization in over 200 cities in the United States and Canada. 
which I think is one of the um, just the strongest aspects of our program that we know that the curriculum has been so well researched and the resources that are available to a program of that size, um, you know, it's really been the best that's been able to be put into it. And then we actually walk through a number of the lessons so that the coaches get an opportunity to practice leading the lessons and seeing what it's like, like pretending that they're the girls and walking through the lessons so that they can really, when they go to coach the lessons, see exactly what it should look like because it is a very integrative program. Um, running is throughout the entire lesson, but it also is the curriculum that deals with serious topics like gossiping and bullying, mm -hmm. healthy eating, positive self-talk, things that are just so important to these girls. So we want to make sure that coaches understand that the lessons are a significant part of it as well as the running. It really is a, a huge responsibility because you're wanting to show these girls uh, how they can focus on the positive and just Absolutely. make the best of their lives. So the curriculum that you're putting before your volunteers is really important and it is an enormous responsibility. I wonder, how do you measure outcomes from what you do in terms of, of the girls who engage and the people who volunteer? How would you say you identify this is a success? We do implement a preseason and postseason survey every season that every one of our girls takes. And across the board, we see that it is increasing girls' self-esteem. It's increasing their attitudes towards exercise in general because we do That's get great. a lot of girls that, because we're a non-competitive environment, maybe they were too scared to try out for the basketball team um, or they don't think they're fast enough to actually be a runner. But because our program is painted in such a fun way, they're a little bit less intimidated to join. And then they can really see because we have so many awesome role models, they get to see that health looks like so many different things, that there's so many different healthy role models in their mm -hmm. lives, and it really sets them up to have um, a lifelong commitment to being healthy. And you've touched on another good point, because it, maybe some are too shy or not confident to go out for a certain competitive sport, but this focuses on their goals individually, but at the same time working with not necessarily a team, but you have a group of people that are all set out for the same kind of goal, and it's a very self-focused but collaborative effort, isn't it? It's Absolutely. pretty unique. And many of the lessons require that they work together for a common goal. Very so nice. um, it's sort of embedded in, in many, many of the lessons. So they get that experience as well. And, and not only does it change their attitude about themselves, but about other girls and how exactly. girls interact with each other. Exactly. Well, talk specifically about soulmates. Sure. That is a program for men and women. You, you okay. mentioned men before. Um, you know, that where you can support Girls on the Run financially. So if you participate in a cycling, a running, a walking, any kind of activity, for a $10 fee, you get a tech t-shirt, a little goodie bag, and then you encourage your fans, your friends, your family, your colleagues to support you. Um, we like everyone to try to commit to $150. And so then that money comes back to Girls on the Run. So if someone is, you know, too busy maybe to be involved, involved weekly as a coach mm -hmm. or to pack coaches' boxes okay. or be on a committee, this is a great way to help girls on the run maybe with an activity that you're already doing. That's, that's wonderful. It's, truly, there is no limit to what anyone can do. You need all sorts of engagement Absolutely. and areas of expertise to bring to the table. And even if it's just coming to our 5K, participating in that, that is, it's open to the public. You just need to register and either participate as a runner or a walker or even standing on the sidewalk and cheering as the girls go That's by. That's huge too. Mm -hmm. Do you find that word of mouth is your best means of getting the word out? Do you have girls who go through this program and parents as well who just say, wow, that was such a great experience? Do you find that more and more girls come to you by virtue of what they've heard? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know that's mm -hmm. how I found out about the program was from another mother. Um, and once she was talking about how great it was for her daughter, I was like, I have to find out about this. Mm -hmm. so. Well, now, how do, for viewers out there who want to know more about it, where can they go? Is there a website? Where can they get more information? Absolutely. If they just want to go to gotrcincinnati.org, um, mm -hmm. or you can Google or Bing, Girls on the Run Cincinnati. Okay. Um, there's also national websites, and then that would lead you to our local council as well. Okay, all right. And, and Joe, we have to give a nod to you because you are the incoming executive director. I am. Not until June 1. <laughs> but July have, 1, July I'll be official, 1. And they have forced you on this show know, to be the spokesperson. So, so it was <laughs> quite a hazing. But we're so glad that you came because it's such an outstanding program. And I hope your, your phone just rings off the hook. Um, 
Well, I guess that's a dated phrase, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. Anyway. But you know what I mean. I hope that's you hear right. from. We have all kinds of hits on our website. Yes, yeah, yeah. tons of hits on your web, hits on your website. Because I just think it's outstanding what you're doing. Well, we appreciate you giving us this format to to inform the public about it because it is a great program that you know not everyone knows about. So no. this is a terrific opportunity for us as well. Exactly, one wonderful effort for young women, and look forward to having you back and talking about your ongoing successes. Great, we would love that. Wonderful. Thanks so yes. much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much. You've been watching Community Report. I'm Vicki Pritchard. Thanks so much for watching, and please join us again next week. If you're a community leader and interested in being on Community Report, give us a call here at the ICRC 772-4272.